वृंद की जय राधा गोपीनाथ की जय ओम अज्ञानति मिरंधस्य ज्ञानांजना शलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलितम ये ना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टम स्थापितम ये न भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री युता पदकमलम श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश्च श्री रूपम सागर जाताम सहगण रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साधवैत सवधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदा सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विशा च नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी की नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ एव पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा सदि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे तम करोति वाचालम पंजम गायते गृहम यत्पात मम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारण परमानंद महापाम श्री चैतन्य शुभम हरे कृष्णा सो थैंक यू टू दी ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ ठाकुर विलेज फॉर कॉलिंग मी फॉर दिस प्रोग्राम इट इज ऑलवेज अ प्रिविलेज टू कम हियर टू लिसन एंड टू स्पीक बोथ राइट एंड आफ्टर वर्ड टू हैव नाइस प्रसाद सो टूडे द टॉपिक आई टूक वॉज स्मॉल थिंग्स कैन मेक अ बिग डिफरेंस छोटा चीज हम करेंगे उससे बड़ा फर्क पड़ सकता है so small things can make a big difference because we always have this concept in this world to do big things ha huh? big thing something big i want to do something big beta hamara bada kaam karega ha huh? sabko lagta hai but to achieve something big ha huh? you need to do those small things ha huh? which are the enablers without which big things can never happen huh? so i will be touching these small things in relationships huh? in devotional service which if we add to our life or we may have already have added to our life but if we if we make that a priority then it can make a big difference to our lives so i am talking about this radha gopina temple so all of you know radha gopina temple yeah so this program is linked to radha gopina temple we are here because of radha gopina temple i am sitting here because of radha gopinath temple huh? there was a book distribution marathon where someone distributed a book to me through radha gopinath and i became a devotee or i am trying to become a devotee i have not yet become a devotee but i am trying to become a devotee okay so this radha gopinath temple it started huh? with just a small thing shila prabhupad had visited somewhere area near bharatiya vidya bhavan and he pointed to sham sundar babu this area we should have a center or a temple so it was just the desire of a pure devotee a small thing huh, 
that later, many years later in 1986, a small center manifested there, where Adhana Swami came from US. He was preaching US, but they told him, go to India. He didn't know why he was being sent to India. And he came to India and he went to this small center. And how big was the center? It was a very small half a room, means not even a one room. Uh, that center was just a half a room where he entered. Uh, and there were a few brahmacharis, but then they were not strict enough. Rest all the area of the temple, which we see today, was occupied by students, bhulas classes, or some industrial estate, or the orphanage. Uh, it was occupied by others. And we just had a small room. But another pure duty, Radhanath Maharaj, he had a desire. Uh, he had a desire to create a Vaishnava community, a family environment in which every single devotee hmm, felt loved, cared for and appreciated. Hmm. He said, he had this vision and he has the desire. He said that Prabhupada said that every temple should have Vaikuntha atmosphere where every devotee feels that everyone else is better than me hmm, and everyone else is my master. So these are Radhanath Swami's uh, vision and desire. If you see, there is a very nice movie called Simple Temple. If you go on the Google and see Simple Temple, this video had come 15 years back. Radhanath Maharaj states what was his vision. Hmm? That he creates a family environment. Every single devotee feels loved, cared for, appreciated. And he worked on that. And you see after so many years, now what has happened? Huh? Radhanath Radha Gopinath has become a temple where there are thousands of devotees, tens of thousands, huh? so many disciples of Maharaj. This Yatra now we are having in uh, Vrindavan, no, now we are having in Jagannath Puri, in Karthik. Huh? How many devotees are attending it? Nine and a half thousand. This is what I was saying. Nine and a half devotees are attending the Yatra. Now, do you attend the Yatra? There are 900,000, nine and a half thousand people who are chanting their 16 rounds. Okay, that is a mandatory thing for attending any Yatra. So, so many devotees are attending the Yatra. Hmm? There is this Bhakti Vedan hospital which has manifested. There is Gopal's garden for children. Hmm? There is the Veda, I mean, uh, the Vedic, uh, Vedic village of Vada. Hmm? And there is this Hare Krishna channel which has manifested, which, is, which has got 25 lakh subscribers, huh? which means 25 lakh families. And in that, people who are there, maybe in a crore, huh? people may be watching that channel. There's Gaur Gopal Prabhu who is preaching. Huh? 40 50 lakhs is, uh, is uh, videos are seen by 40 50 lakhs. So, practically, tens of thousands of devotees are there, and we are preaching to tens of lakhs or maybe even in crores of people. They are being touched by Krishna's mercy in some way or the other. Huh? This whole thing has manifested by what? Only a simple desire of Srila Prabhupada that there should be a center here and desire of Maharaj to come out with a Vaishnava community where everyone feels cared for, loved, protected and Krishna has sent his mercy and this beautiful Radha Gopinath temple with many centers, many temples in Pune and all over Maharashtra there are many centers uh, affiliated to the temple. So that is manifested just by a small thing, desire of a pure devotee. So among the small things which I want to touch upon is a smile, a kind word, a acts of kindness and love, how they make a big difference uh, to our lives. So, uh, when I was a child, you know, um, there was a, I, I, I had taken a Hindi class and I still remember that poem when I was preparing for the lecture, I remember that poem taught by my Hindi teacher that time. The poem was like this, Choti Choti Jalki Bunde Sagar Ko Bhar Deti Hai Daya bhare laghu kaam hamare aur prema mein mithe bol kar dete sabke jeevan ko sundar sukhamay ati anamol. How many of you have heard that poem? I don't know when you are less, I don't know when anyone has. But this was a poem taught by my teacher. What? Daya bhare laghu kaam hamare aur prema mein mithe bol kar dete sabke jeevan ko sundar sukhamay ati anamol. And this is just what happened with Srila Prabhupada. Just recently, last week, we celebrated Srila Prabhupada's appearance day. So, this is a case, this is a story when Srila Prabhupada was in the US and he was successful now. 
there were thousands of devotees as his disciples and there are many temples opened huh? and Srila Prabhupada was visiting one temple in the US and there were devotees and his Vyas Puja was there. They were celebrating his Vyas Puja, Srila Prabhupada. He was sitting on the Vyasasan. Now we have Srila Prabhupada's uh, uh, idol, no? uh, the deity in the Vyasasan. But there actually Srila Prabhupada was sitting and people were dancing and saying Jai Srila Prabhupada and they were doing Guri Puja and all that. And suddenly Srila Prabhupada observed one person. He was standing there. He was limping. Huh? He had some problem in his foot, some injury in his foot. So what Srila Prabhupada did, he called that person near. And he said, took out the money from his pocket. And he said, take this money. Huh? And he wrote down a medicine huh, for his foot injury. And he said, please huh, take this medicine from the pharmacy. And you take care of your feet. And that act of love and care touched that devotee so much that he said that many years after Srila Prabhupada left, Srila Prabhupada was there for 10 years, right? 19, uh, 1967 to uh, somewhere 10 years he was there. And then he left for the uh, spiritual world or wherever. So there, then there was a, some problems in ISKCON. There was some turmoil because there was a vacuum created by this. And the GBC stepped in and they stabilized. But during that time, this person whom Srila Prabhupada had told this love and compassion, he went through many difficulties. Huh? He had many bad experiences. But he said, still I continued in his con only because Srila Prabhupada had shown me that care and love. Huh? I experienced that care and love of Srila Prabhupada which I had never experienced through anyone else. Right? So that is the only thing which kept him going. Now if you see, Srila Prabhupada, he always aimed for the rhino. He said, you go to the West, you go to the UK for people who had nothing. They were practically with children, small children. Huh? Sham Sundarpur had small children and he, one child. And he went to the UK without any money and built a temple. He sent someone to China, he sent someone to Russia, he sent someone to Pakistan, wherever. But people were ready to do anything for him. For these big projects. Why? Because of these small things. They felt such care and love from Srila Prabhupada uh, in his interactions, small, small interactions, that ne had never felt such love even from their parents. The people who love us the most are our parents. But even they felt this love was so selfless that they felt this love which they have never experienced before. And for that love, for those, because Srila Prabhupada expressed that love through these small things, they were prepared to risk their lives and do anything for Srila Prabhupada. So that was the difference which they made. So now we go to another story of how small things can make a big difference. This is about Radhanath Maharaj. You see in his journey home, he has written that he was wandering as a young boy. He was wandering through India and he came to the Himalayas. And he was going through the Himalayas. And he was in search of truth. He was in search of God. He had not yet come and met Srila Prabhupada. And at that time, he came across a leper colony. A colony of lepers. Pushtarog, na? Pushtarog, correct? Pushtarog. And they were in the Himalayas because they were outcasted by the society. They had nothing. They were removed from their villages. And they just came out from the mud and they surrounded Maharaj. Uh, that was uh, that time, uh, he was not Maharaj, he was just a teenage boy. And they surrounded him uh, and they put him on the ground and they were searching all over his body for money. Uh, and they did not find any money on Maharaj. And then they said, okay, they were, they, they were filled with dirt uh, and they just left Maharaj. And then one leper woman, a very old woman came to meet Maharaj and Maharaj first was very concerned but then he saw in her eyes that she did not want any money all she wanted huh, that old one was to give him motherly love huh? and she put her hand and seeing that Maharaj bowed his head and he put she put her hand on his head and Maharaj said this harrowing experience which I had huh, it was worth it because I experienced that love selfless love of that mother and that small act of love of that old leper woman, it touched Maharaj so much, that boy so much, that now when Maharaj is in his 70s, huh, recently he put a video saying 
that in his life he met the most beautiful woman the most beautiful woman and he told was whom this particular leper woman so in our aim you no know, in this society it's made that we want to do big achievements huh? uh, parents want us to achieve first uh, f- top ranks uh, then society wants us to achieve lot of money hmm? but in that we should not forget this small thing because this is what makes a difference to lives this is what you no know, is the essence hmm? so there is another story about the same thing and this is about uh, dr abdul kalam so this dr abdul kalam you know he was the president of india he is no more now he is a missile man he is called a missile man he is the one who pioneered this rockets and made a lot of contributions there so incidentally abdul kalam also came to bhakti nagar hospital where i work i was not there working that time and he has opened our cardiac unit you know so we had the privilege that time he was not the president but he opened our cardiac unit and he said that um, i see ethics uh, ethics and fairness in this hospital i see the spirituality in this hospital these are his words so this abdul kalam he was working for a target they had to delivery of some missile system or some space mission they had to meet those targets and those scientists hundreds of scientists under him i don't know how many they were they were all working day and night because they had to meet the date you remember chandrayaan right chandrayaan is an event where the whole nation is looking to that and can you imagine the pressure on that scientist to make it successful and the kind of efforts they would be putting huh? so this was similar case where people were working day and night and they had to meet that target of that delivery of that missile system or that rocket launch or whatever it was and in that uh, one scientist was there was a senior he told abdul kalam that monday i want to go at 5:30 a bit early 5:30 he had deliverables but he said for my child uh, i have i have to take him to a particular uh, function a certain function where he has to take the child so he had to leave so abdul kalam said yes you can definitely go and uh, and that day happened that day came and this scientist was working because he had a target to meet and he forgot that he had to take his children to that particular function where they had to uh, and he was working 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 and 8:30 he remembered uh, he remembered that hey i told my wife that i will make my ch- children to that function now what will my wife say ghar mein ja ke jhagda hoga you had promised this you are not doing this you are always in your work you are not putting any thing on your family but when he ho- went home and met his wife his wife was very cool and she said that uh, Oh, why we have to go out for dinner at night? So how are you and all? She said, "What? She's not telling anything that you forgot the child, children, and all." No, he said, "No. What happened is at five thirty, your boss Abdul Kalam he came, uh, and he took the child, the children to that uh, particular function. That was the exhibition somewhere there to go. So he took the children to the exhibition. Uh, so this small thing by Abdul Kalam it touched that scientist's heart so much, and that word spread to other scientists." Uh, they felt that this man is a person who really cares for us and they put all their heart in their that mission and they achieved success in that so this was the character of abdul kalam he achieved great things for the country but how by making a difference in these small things which matter so now uh, i would we have talked about abdul kalam Uh, we have talked about Chila Prabhupada Maharaj. Now I would like to talk about the relationship at home. So uh, I heard this story by a senior devotee. This is a true story. Uh, the senior devotee told this, and he was telling me that uh, us he was addressing, and he told a story about another devotee he knew. This devotee used to work in his office and come late at night at home, and in his house there was his parents. so he did he used to do one thing that whenever he came at home uh, when he reached home he used to have his prasad and all that and at night he used to go to his father's place where his father was sleeping on the bed and he used to press his feet father's feet every day he had love for his father so this is what he used to do regularly and then one day uh, he was tired and he came late at saturday and he, uh, whatever and he was tired and he was sleeping on the sunday sunday was a 
resting day for him right and he was sleeping on his bed huh? and he was relaxing and suddenly he felt someone pressing his feet so he looked who was that huh? so a small child who was there he was pressing the feet of his father so how huh? by doing service to his father huh? and by showing care to his father he set the culture in the family the culture of service culture of love culture of care to your parents and that culture came to his children so when he grows old what will happen the child will treat him with the same culture so the small things which you do at home with your parents in laws huh, they form the culture for your children for our children and they come back to us right similarly with our wife i mean this is something which happens so many times the wife says to the husband you don't listen to me aap sunte hi nahi ha main bol rahi hu bol rahi but aap sun hi nahi rahe ho and husband says that tum to din bhar bolti rehte ho you are always talking throughout the day and i'm constantly listening what do you mean by don't i'm always hearing you what do you mean by you are not listening ha so there is this paradox which happens so it said that men on from mars there was a book when i was young i don't know it's people still read it men are from mars and women are from venus <laughs> they have a different way of thinking and the uh, males have a different way of thinking so this was a good good rahasya which i was trying to find a solution what is this solution because how the wife says that you never listen to me and she feels that uh, and the husband says you are always talking i am always listening so what is this huh? so i was recently uh, i was reading this book of uh, steven covey seven habits of highly effective people it's a management book so he says in this management book about listening so what i am telling here is we have to add this small thing about listening to our to our behavior so he was saying that there are four levels of listening first level is that when the husband is talking Uh, when when someone is talking rather we are just ignoring the person uh, we are not listening only we are ignoring the person so that is one level of listening second level of listening is that we are pretending to listen we are reading the paper and saying hmm hmm so man dola re but wo sun nahi rahe ha aap log sun nahi rahe but ha aisa aisa kare so we are pretending to listen so that other people is feels that you are doing something third third type of listening is selective listening uh, we only listen to certain things uh, which we want to hear like when the wife says prasad hai aapke liye uh, uh, kya hai pav bhaji hai to you listen but udhar se jaake kuch lane hai you want to bring something from that uh, so selective listening uh, that time we may not listen as a husband i am just uh, so this selective listening uh, and then there is the attentive listening in the attentive listening you listen with attention and you pay focus huh, on the energy or the words which are being spoken so you listen to each and every word huh? but there is a fifth category of listening which steven covey says which is the empathetic listening huh? empathetic listening means when you listen to anyone you just don't listen to the words and what is saying but you listen for the feelings of that person what he is feeling so you go in that person's shoes and you see from that person's eyes huh, that what he is feeling and what he is going through and what he is saying and that is the listening which we need to do huh? so when we listen we just don't listen so he says that when you listen you just don't listen for what the person is saying that you have to listen but what he is feeling what is going through Uh, that is called emotional intelligence or empathetic listening and when you do this empathetic listening uh, he says that you put deposits into the emotional bank balance of that person so there is a bank balance in a person emotional bank balance and by various ways you put deposits uh, so then that person gets trust in you he gets faith in you you open up to that person uh, you develop deeper relationships so he is talking about this emotional bank balance which can be achieved by just empathetic listening so i had this experience in one of the companies i worked where i tried to practice this it's not that i can practice every time but yes this time i tried to practice 
so in this empathetic listening uh, we had appraisal when the appraisal we have to ask for feedback give feedback uh, to our junior so i was sitting with my team leader and this uh, young junior team member was she was a girl an unmarried girl and she was telling so we were giving uh, so first we asked for a feedback how do you feel things are happening and in the project how are things how are people treating you are you feeling happy and all that so she was saying that no people are uh, she was reluctant no she was not opening up and uh, she was feeling that people are coming late and all that but she was i got a sense that she was not saying the real thing huh? so what we practice what empathetic listening in which you first need to have a desire to understand the person most important huh? many times when we are listening what do we do we first only say that uh, we accept it or reject it what the person is saying before and only before listening we accept or reject huh? pehle se usko ye karte hai ya second thing is you start probing without listening asking questions or third worse is you start giving advice without understanding or without giving listening huh? ya yeah, for you listen and you think about your own mind some calculations are going that he is not trying to manipulate like this he is trying to do because because he has a hidden agenda or something so you are not actually listening to understand so first you need to have this desire to listen to understand so we had this desire to understand so when we discuss with her for half an hour then suddenly she opened up and she said that i am feeling that i am no longer wanted in this project means i am feeling that i i don't i am feeling not wanted so my team leader was surprised how you are feeling like that huh? because a new person had come in the project who was senior and we had given him some work which was more difficult which earlier she used to do she said earlier i had to work from morning to night now, now i don't have much work and the senior is doing the work and i am feeling unwanted so this was the feeling in her heart which opened up when we had the sincere desire to understand that person huh? this is called empathetic listening where you just not hear what she says but what she is feeling and when we heard her out and we then express this is what you feel because of this reason huh? we we understood we repeated that as we had understood hmm? then in the end she said that i am feeling so good now because aapne suna to itna effort sunne ke liye to liya मैंने कुछ सोल्यूशन नहीं दिया आई नॉट गिवन एनी सोल्यूशन जस्ट आई हैड डन एम्पथेटिक लिस्निंग वेर आई अंडरस्टूड हर वॉट शी इज फीलिंग एंड आई एम्पथाइज दैट येस दिस इज वॉट यू आर फीलिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दिस इज वॉट यू आर गोइंग थ्रू जस्ट बाय दैट शी फेट सो गुड सो दिस इज वन स्मॉल थिंग इफ वी कैन एड टू आवर आवर बिहेवियर दैट टू लिसन to people empathetically it will take your relationships in your family with your junior with your boss with devotees to a different level huh? so we can add this small thing which is called empathetic listening hmm? so now uh, uh, when uh, when uh, many times what happens is when radhanath maharaj huh, um, devotees go to express their problems and feelings and all and many times maharaj spends the time and when he spends the time with them he is totally present and he just does this listening no he does this empathetic listening and just by telling maharaj their problems when is not the maharaj gives a solution every time huh? people who have met maharaj just by going there and this listens to him and things just vanish so um, second thing i was uh, talking about this vaishnav relationships तो भक्ति वेदांत वॉज स्टार्टेड बाय फाइव मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स हु केम टुगेदर एंड अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ राधानाथ महाराज दे आर गोइंग टू वेरियस विलेजेस एंड डूरिंग द मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट एंड इन दैट प्रोसेस दे आर गिविंग कृष्णा टू देम वेरी इनोवेटिव वे ऑफ प्रीचिंग इट स्टार्टेड इन अ वेरी स्मॉल वे बट दे आर दिस फाइव स्टूडेंट्स एंड दे जस्ट वो आई वेंटेड टू प्रीच एंड वेंट टू विलेजेस एंड इन द Uh, in a innovative way they were uh, serving the people by giving the medical treatment and the process they were giving krishna krishna prasad and krishna kirtan and all that so i was just speaking to one of the founders vishwar prabhu because i was going to give this lecture small thing lead to make can make a big difference i asked what are the small things you did <laughs> because i want to give this lecture what are the small things you did by which now you have got this big hospital bhakti you are making i'll go into that what success they have achieved phenomenal success no huh? ha 
uh, but how what are the small things which happened uh, so he told me uh, that maharaj told them one thing when they started out uh, if you practice this profession yourself uh, you will be successful uh, but if you serve together uh, in the spirit of cooperation uh, your name will be on the pages of history this is maharaj words to them so all they did is they cooperated with each other to serve the vision of shila prabhupad and by that cooperation ha maharaj told them that when you cooperate and have their camaraderie and have that unity and have the relationships then you can get the grace of krishna and you can achieve things which are far beyond you this is what maharaj told and then vishwarup said one of the small things maharaj told them was this he told them that once in 15 days all of you five people all of you people should meet with your families only to hear chant ha hear krishna katha speak krishna katha chant the glories do kirtan and eat prasad and do not discuss any administrative issue this is all you should discuss once in 15 days you meet together uh, with your family with your wife children whatever and all together you just have this do this that chant here and discuss krishna prasad and eat krishna prasad hmm? you they had this exchanges of love huh? prasad krishna katha and heartfelt feelings huh? so the thing was that when you have your relationships which are beyond the workplace which are at which reach home huh? then working together in an office also gets enhanced you can achieve the cooperation you can achieve the unity which is required for the project hmm? and this is one of the small things which they did and now what has happened those five people who are just students who had nothing who didn't have proper money also huh? now we have this bhakti vedant hospital who is now which is going to be a 270 bedded hospital hmm? there are 12 satellite centers huh? thousands of devotees ha huh, sanyasis ha huh, initiated devotees proper disciples many de- proper disciples are also being served and there are around 2 and a half lakh patients who come every year in the opd or ipd together 2 and a half lakh they all hear prabhupad's kirtan they get prasad they can see the jagannath temple they are given krishna consciousness why just by the small thing they did ha huh? huh? that is to cooperate with each other and to achieve that what was the small thing they did just every 15 days one of the small things that every 15 days they all met together with their families and had krishna katha kirtan huh? had prasad revealed their hearts huh? shared their hearts feelings of love huh? so rupa goswami says in text 4 of nectar of instruction huh? he says that this particular verse ददाति प्रतिगृणाति घुयम अख्यति प्रच्छति भूंजते भोजते भोजयते चैव षद्विध प्रीति लक्षण वॉट दिस मीन्स इज ऑफरिंग गिफ्ट्स इन चैरिटी एक्सेप्टिंग चैरिटेबल गिफ्ट्स रिवीलिंग वंस माइंड इन कॉन्फिडेंस इन्क्वायरिंग कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी एक्सेप्टिंग प्रसाद एंड ऑफरिंग प्रसाद आर सिक्स सिम्टम्स ऑफ लव शेयर बाय वन डिओटी विथ अनादर what rupa goswami says meaning of this verse is offering gifts in charity huh? means you offer each other some small gifts devotional gifts or any gift or even the gift of chanting of the name of krishna huh? in charity receive those gifts in charity reveal one's mind in confidence huh? you reveal your mind to other other devotee whom you trust that what these are the problems happening this is how my sadhana is going or discuss about what you heard about krishna inquire about what he heard in the class huh? inquiring about krishna inquiring from the devotee and revealing your mind in confidence and of course krishna prasad calling him at home for prasad going to his house for prasad these are the things symptoms of love when we shared with the devotees they develop the relationships the depth of the relationships huh? by which devotees can cooperate with each other and get the mercy of krishna by which you can achieve things which are far beyond yourself huh? so when shila prabhupad was on his last deathbed in his last days huh? what is the instruction he gave to the uh, his devotees he gave this instruction that your love for me would be shown 
by how you cooperate with each other huh? he was on his deathbed he was in his last days and he could have told that create temples all over the villages cities this is my last instruction millions of books huh? this this very is instruction i mean he wanted this but what is the instruction he told your love for me huh, would be shown by how you cooperate with each other so this is what is the essence huh? the small thing of cooperation which is done by what rupa goswami said the small thing which rupa goswami said dadati prati grunati guyam akhyati prachyati bhunjate bhojate chaiva shadvidham priti lakshanam uh, offering gifts in charity accepting the charitable gifts revealing one's mind in confidence inquiring confidentially about krishna accepting prasad offering prasad by which you can develop the deep relationships uh, if you implement in your life uh, even in this program uh, you can develop the deep relationships by which you can do something which is way beyond your imagination uh, seven years 10 years down the line you'll find that this is a vaishnav village and there's a temple and whatever it will flourish like anything but for that we have to do these small things going ahead we have uh, want to speak upon pleasing the devotees so radhat maharaj uh, in new vrindavan uh, shila propa during his time he opened this uh, temple in new vrindavan and in new vrindavan there are many devotees and it was flourishing and later on when shila propa passed away that whole thing started collapsing huh? the devotees started going away the relationships were not there financial problems all number of problems could happen was happening in that new vrindavan community in the us huh? and maharaj was given charge of that community so maharaj said that when i was given charge one thing by shila propa's grace what i did was i i came to understand that the cows were being neglected in the new vrindavan and i put the best devotees who were available there in serving the cows and when they started to serve the cows what happened was something amazing now you see a problem is going on in your company i mean i am just saying an example that relationship not there profit is not there this is not there sales are not happening whatever and suddenly someone says i am just giving an analogy that there are these cows and you take care of the cows put your best people in the company to take care of the cows and what will the president of the company say if i put this proposal to him say so you are fired <laughs> there my i got my best strategy people and they are doing best brains and still is not progressing and you are saying so simpson something similar that this community was not flourishing it was going down and maharaj put the best of devotees to take care of the cows but then a amazing thing happened suddenly the finance started coming devotee started coming the relationship started uh, uh, getting better and the community started flourishing uh, so maharaj what did he do uh, uh, krishna is go brahmana hitaya ch uh, uh, he loves the cows and he loves the brahmanas uh, and what maharaj did he did something which pleased the cows made the cows happy and suddenly krishna's mercy started pouring in and krishna's mercy did everything so that is the secret of bhakti that you act in a way which pleases the devotees and if that happens then you get access to the mercy of krishna by which you can achieve things beyond your imagine they start happening you are just an instrument aap hath pair hila rahe ho but things start happening uh, that whole credit goes to krishna because krishna is pleased so this was the thing which ha- has ha- which happened in vrindavan now what is there for us to learn from this what are the small thing which we have to implement so uh, what we need to see is when uh, you analyze the devotees who were with maharaj in the earlier times who were very close with maharaj radhanath maharaj i was just discussing with my god brother who is also they are they are they are also 25 years 27 years into iskon a krishna conscious movement but these devotees who have spent now 35 years they came in 1986 along with maharaj they had a close association of maharaj huh? and we find for, for these devotees they are now in some of them are in their 60s now 
but still they have this intense desire to serve and they are into so many services and they are getting a lot of services also and they are able to do a make a big difference in those services also so we are thinking how is this possible how is it possible what is the secret so the secret is their mood is the secret is they have this intense desire to please guru maharaj in whatever they do whatever they do they are always thinking will this please guru maharaj that is there in the forefront of their idea forefront of their whatever they are doing whatever project they are doing will this please guru maharaj my actions my words how i am treating others will this please guru maharaj uh, their only desire because of the association the love they got from maharaj is that their desire is how i can please guru maharaj that is in the top of their desire stack uh, so can we also make this a desire in at least some of our actions some of the things we do uh, that what will guru maharaj will pleased will guru maharaj will pleased with this will this act of mine be pleasing to guru maharaj if we cultivate this desire of pleasing guru pleasing shila prabhupad pleasing the vaishnavas then you will find that you will get into such services and you they will come to you and you will achieve success which you are looking for in devotional service also we look for success no we look to achieve something because we have this achievement mentality but the small thing of having this desire to please devotees no? this is what we, we don't want service or to achieve things for the name fame for people to bow down to us touch our feet but our desire to do this is so that we can please the devotees please guru please shila prabhupad and if you cultivate this desire then you will find many things happening in your life by which you will there will be big difference to you and you will make a big difference to other people now i will go into the prayers something about prayers so uh, we had uh, in bhaktivedanta hospital i was reporting to a senior uh, devotee he was a senior counselor he is now retired but and i am in charge of the quality of the hospital so this is the first time we are going for this quality accreditation in india it's a very prestigious uh, this was in 9, 2015 and 16 and this is a very prestigious accreditation and few hospitals had it and no hospital from borli to virar or palgar had that accreditation and we were going it for the first time and i was a coordinator for that and we had a team of clinical non clinical people and i was reporting to this uh, senior dod who uh, who is a md doctor and uh, uh, we did the pre assessment and uh, we passed it and we were going for the final assessment we did the final assessment and after the assessment we get non compliances means you have to close this ncs non compliances these things are not there so you have to close them and once you close them you get the certification so we had a few 30 40 which were quite good considering we are facing a first time and those non compliances we had put in a uh, in a cd and we had put in a courier packet and we were now going to send these to anibage office in delhi this anibage quality certification and we went to this uh, senior devotee and said uh, we uh, we are going this so he said yeah let's go and pray to jagannath baldev so we all our team we went with him we went to jagannath baldev temple jagannath baldev subedar temple and we kept this packet in front of lord jagannath and he said oh lord jagannath these devotees have worked so hard huh? and now they are submitting this ncs huh? so we pray to you that we may get this anibage certificate if you so desire he put this word if you so desire so i felt we had worked hard said why you are keeping if you so desire you just say to the, let's pray to jagannath that should get the anibage the devotees have worked hard but because he had that pure consciousness he is always aligned to krishna's plan he put that clause if you so desire and um, when he retired uh, we all did this drama for him and there we acted out this play and we said that uh, he, one of them us acted as him the doctor and he said that is oh jagannath if you so desire he put that if you so desire 
and that created a, such an impact on my heart that I started practicing it sometimes when I used to pray to the Lord, not every time. Huh? Because every time we cannot be aligned to Krishna because we are not pure devotees. Huh? For difficult, sometimes we say to Krishna that, no, no Krishna, I, please give me this. <laughs> because, but uh, I started applying in my life hmm, to some extent, not always. Hmm. And we cannot always apply this uh, at our level. But we practice applying this, that when you are praying, we say that, if you so desire Krishna, hmm, then what happened is this was in 2020 when Corona happened in April. Hmm. And at that time, uh, my wife was detected with a very serious health uh, disease. Hmm. And in July, she had to go to a surgery. And that surgery was uh, a critical surgery. And I was quite tense. Hmm. Exactly on 23rd July. And uh, when she went for the surgery, I sent a mail to Pankaj Angare Prabhu in Mayapur. Uh, now, Pankaj um, Angare Prabhu and Jannas Prabhu where the Pujari is of Mayapur. Now Pankajangari Prabhu is no more. Jannas Prabhu is there of Radha Madhav and Narsiya Dev. And specifically Pankajangari Prabhu is the Pujari of Narsimha Dev. So I sent a mail to him saying that uh, and because I had sent earlier also because I had got his mail ID through a Brahmachari and uh, who had prayed for us to him. Uh, and it worked for us. And then we had prayed to Pankaja for many other devotees, their parents or whatever. And so I sent for my wife also. I sent a mail to Pankaja on 23rd July that my wife has been detected with this disease. I gave the specific word disease. She is being operated today. I am reading out the exact thing which I said. Request you to please offer prayers to Lord Narsin Dev so that if he so desires, the operation is successful and she recovers from this disease and the treatment of this is be successful. So it was a life and death issue. But somehow when I was passing through this troubled phase and uh, you get shaken. You know? So this is uh, Radha Gopinath calls this mercy from behind. Huh? Mercy from front is what you get what you want. You get this, you get this, you get appreciation, you get your job, you get money, everything. Suddenly a disease comes major. Uh, Radha Gopinath calls it mercy from behind. And when this happens, it is very difficult to appreciate. You get shaken. So I was in that state. But I was taking guidance from senior devotees who are telling me about Krishna, faith in Krishna, increasing my faith. So somehow, while sending this mail, I put this clause that please huh, let us operation be successful, treatment if he so desires. I put that clause. <laughs> I don't know how, but I put it. And then that operation, which was supposed to be two hours laparoscopic surgery of the stomach, they detected something and it was cancelled from a laparoscopic surgery to an open surgery and it went for 5 hours and my wife was supposed to be shifted to ward after the operation was shifted to ICU and I had prayed to the Lord to Pankajangare and I was in a very tense situation and next day 24 July I get this mail from Pankajangare Prabhu saying that the uh, exact thing is we have offered prayers to Lord Narsinya Dev asking that if it is his desire then the operation and treatment will be successful for your wife. When I saw that mail in my heart I felt a sharp pain and anxiety because obviously my desire was that my wife should come out of this disease and this operation successful. I was not aligned to Krishna's desire if he chose otherwise. No, it was a life and death issue that if she, he chose otherwise that if she dies or it progresses, this is progress towards death. And I was remembering that yesterday during the operation I put this mail and uh, instead of two hour operation, it went to five hour operation. So I was concerned what was Lord's desire? <laughs> like if his desire is that way then, you know, and I went into anxiety. But things so unfolded that after the next 3-4 months we underwent that treatment and all and she came out of that disease, she came out of the operation was successful, everything went fine. And then one thing I realized in my heart, huh, that realization was that Krishna is so kind huh, because he did not test me beyond my level. Huh. I gave it to him 
if you so desire uh, so many times for maharaj many young boys come and maharaj please give me some instruction for me so that i can practice it and maharaj says doesn't say come and join brahmacharya ashram <laughs> if he said like that, how many will join uh, maharaj looks at that person understand his surrender understand very coming and gives him a, accordingly a instruction sometimes he says you read bhagavatam uh, sometimes says that your counselor you listen to him he is representing me uh, sometimes it is uh, some such instruction here my some simple instructions he gives looking at the, but some person who is surrendered he says join bro without even asking he will say why don't you join brahmacharya ashram he sees that potential he sees the surrender they don't give the instruction unnecessarily similarly in shila prabhupas case uh, i was hearing shila prabhupas katha uh, once uh, this is the time when he was in the us many young boys were joining him they were hippies and they were rejecting and one of his disciples he came to him and said prabhupad i am not getting along with my wife i want to divorce her i am going to divorce i want to divorce her. i need your permission to divorce and prabhupad looked at him and said okay you can divorce now the close disciples of maharaj were there they asked prabhupad prabhupad what is this you always say that marriage is for life now you should never divorce your wife how did you give permission to divorce this question it's a right question right how did you give this permission so prabhupad said a very wonderful thing huh? he said that even if i would have told to this disciple that do not divorce he would have divorced huh? but along with his divorce he would have the additional bad karma or the offense of disobeying the order of his spiritual master and i did not want it that would have been cause of his fault i did not want that so i gave him the permission to divorce can you see his consciousness he is a person who is following the principle of krishna so strictly huh? but looking at that person looking at his, his devotion he should stay in devotion he gave even that advice that you can divorce why because he was sure that even if i give the advice that you don't he will divorce he did not have that surrender he was just asking for formality huh? so just to protect him from aparad of disobeying the order of the spiritual master he gave that particular thing so why i am telling this is that when you add this clause in your prayers not every time but sometimes if you so desire you will find amazing things happening huh? you will find that sometimes krishna's desire is as per your desire things happen what you want but sometimes they happen 180 degrees different you want this way and he want this way huh? and if krishna's plan it will be different you get bewildered right what is this happening huh? and then after a few months or after a few years you realize that what krishna's desire was perfect for me what his plan that time which happened in my life was the best thing for me huh? it is like a small child huh? he said mummy mummy mere ko ye chahiye nahi and parents say nahi nahi ye mat karo padhai karo acche acche doston ke sath raho iske sath mat raho why 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 dil creep and finally they'll follow and later when they grow up they say the parents when they say that was the best thing which happened to me huh? so similarly this is a case with krishna that we have our desires uh, it is said that we make our plan looking at the current situation hmm? we make our plan looking at the present and krishna makes our plan looking at our future he wants us to come back to us that is the difference so when you put this clause in our prayer that if you so desire sometimes wherever you can you will find that sometimes krishna's desire is not aligned to your desire but it works out so well that you develop faith in krishna's plan you think slowly you get the faith that aligning to krishna's desire is the best for you like hearing the parents because they are a well wisher huh? parents are a well wisher but the best well wisher for us is krishna it is said that his love for us is like the love of a million mothers huh? mothers love multiplied million times that is krishna's love for us huh? so will his plan for us not be the best for us but that faith we don't have so we ask our desires we don't align ourselves to krishna's desires but the pure devotee of the lord 
they align themselves to Krishna's plan. They align themselves to Krishna's desire. So can we add this small thing to our prayer? Sometimes, if you so desire, and you'll find that your faith will grow over a period, your trust in Krishna will grow, and you will be more inclined to follow Krishna's plan. So finally, uh, we are into praying, right? So what we did uh, is, we started with how the small desire of Srila Prabhupada was, there should be a temple of Maharaj was, that there should be a community where every single devotee feels loved and cared for. And it has resulted into this Radha Gopina temple and a wonderful congregation of tens of thousands of devotees preaching to tens of lakhs of people or maybe even crores, right? They are getting reached out. Hmm? Then we talked about small smile, a small act of kind word, kind acts of love. And we said Srila Prabhupada who, uh, who told us devotee to get a medicine who's, during his Vyas Puja. Huh? Small thing. Huh? But these things endeared Srila Prabhupada to the devotee. They were prepared to do anything for him. Hmm? Then we talked about Radhanath Maharaj where he met that old woman. She gave him the blessing. She only wanted to give him love. Small act of love. And he remembered this when he became Maharaj, Sanyasi. And he's saying that that is the most beautiful woman I ever met. Huh? That's the impact that small act of love made on him. Then we have about Abdul Kalam. Huh? Small act of care for the family of his scientist. And all the scientists were inspired to work for him day and night. Because it's, such is a leader. Huh? We would like to work for him. Give all our heart for such a leader. Then relationships. Huh? Taking care of your parent. The DOD pressing the feet of his father. And the young child pressing his feet. Hmm? And then with your five. Listening. Huh? Empathetic listening. So these are the various small things we can add to our life which will make a difference to others and us. And then this Vaishnava relationship. Dadati prati grunati guya makyati prachati bhunjate bhojate eschaiva shad vidham priti lakshanam means offering gifts in charity with devotees, accepting charitable gifts, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentiality huh, about Krishna, accepting prasad, offering prasad, these six Small thing we do, it will develop deep relationships which will lead to cooperation between devotees and you can access the mercy of Srila Prabhupada by which you can achieve big things beyond all of you. And then we talked about pleasing devotees. The intense desire of these initial associates of Maharaj, the senior devotees, that to please Maharaj, every time they have this contemplation, will this please Guru, will this please Vaishnava, will this please Prabhupada? And all their acts, actions, words, they think that will this please Maharaj. Can we add these small desire in our desire list and make it a bit higher uh, to please the devotees? And then adding the small thing in your prayer to the Lord that if you so desire. And now we are moving to the final thing which I want to share. This is a story about a doctor which I recently heard. Uh, my wife shared it with me. It's wonderful, she said. And uh, this is about a person talking about a doctor called Shailesh Mehta. And this person who is talking, uh, his voice is like Abdul Kalam. I don't know if that's actual voice or whatever. But I read the same story of the Shailesh Mehta on the website of Chinmay Mission or some other mission. Huh? Dr. Shailesh Mehta. So there is a high chance that this is authentic. But even if it is, I feel it is authentic. But even if it is not authentic, we have to take the both. Uh, what we learn from this. So this is a story of this uh, Dr. Shailesh Mehta, which I feel uh, may be a true story. This doctor, uh, this is a story uh, about 10 years back uh, in 2009, where this, is, this doctor was a top cardiac surgeon in Baroda. And he was not an emotional person at all. And he believed in his skills. He was very professional. He was highly skilled, highly intelligent. And he was so well in his surgery that he used to do 10 heart operations at a time. In a day. 10 heart operations. To open the heart and uh, you need to be so strong in your heart, right? <laughs> no emotion. So he was not an emotional person at all. Uh, and he did not believe so much in prayers and all that. And he used to focus on his excellence and he used to do his surgery. So this is a story he shared with his friend. And his friend is saying, mm, talking. So he's saying that I was doing the surgeries huh? and this, uh, this uh, he was sharing with his friend in the 1st Jan 2009, huh? his friend is saying. And uh, during that, 
in the 27 december 2008 few days earlier a small child a parents uh, came with a small child a child who was a 6 year old girl and she, her heart had a problem her artery were totally clogged they were totally clogged uh, and it was a very very seeing the reports is that i knew that this was a very very uh, dangerous situation for the child uh, the situation such that he said that we will have to operate her immediately uh, even if i operate her survival chance for the operation is only 30% but if you don't operate within 3 months the child will die the girl will die so parents obviously will say kuch bhi karo do the operation but save her and try your best because he is the best hospital best doctor most intelligent most capable famous throughout india uh, he had hundreds of other doctors in various centers who were st- studying or inspired by him and when he went into the operation so this child came and uh, came into his uh, hospital and the mother was staying with the child and what the mother is to do is to she is to pray to the lord uh, and teach the child also to pray to the lord uh, and apply the angara or the vibhuti uh, uh, sacred ashes which we apply to the child uh, and the time for the operation came and he entered so what happens is when he enters the junior doctors they do the opening of the heart no they open up that they are also expert skilled people but they opened up the heart and he uh, no, they had not opened up the heart sorry so he entered it huh? the child was there uh, the child was there and he felt a small tinge of concern because he said that this small child what if the operation not successful this he felt a small concern no that what will happen uh, even though this doctor was doing the operation day in day out for this child he felt that concern and uh, the child uh, he just said don't worry child everything will be all right hmm? i'll do it so the doctor the child asked him a question huh? hmm? asked him a question that everyone is saying that uh, my surgery will be open heart surgery huh? his mother had told means my whole heart will be opened my chest will be opened my whole heart will be open so the doctor said don't worry you won't feel the pain No, no, no! I am not worried about the pain. The child said, "But my mother has said that in the heart resides the Lord, God. He resides there. So when you open my heart, and if you see the God, please tell me how the God looks like." Huh? So all she said, and this person was flabbergasted. He said, "I want to say because you are not a so much believer of a God or something. He did not want to say." and he started with his surgery this you will get on the net uh, this particular video you hear it and you browse you will find in chinmay mission all about this doctor uh, same story you will find so uh, now the operation started uh, and he opened the heart the doctors assisted him and he was 45 minutes into the operation uh, and they put the child on the heart lung machine there is a heart lung machine it takes over the heart and uh, they are doing that and he found that no blood is coming in the heart actually the blood should come in the heart the operation is whatever is successful the blood was not coming and the child's pulse rate was started coming down and the bp started coming down because this person was a expert he understood the symptoms and he said that now most probably the child is going to die there nothing i can do so he sat down and he told his uh, doctors that do the switcher you know switcher means do the stitches now means i was told them almost but that time he remembered what the child had said when you open my heart if you see god god is in the heart you tell me how he looks like and he felt so such emotions that he started crying and he started praying to the lord first time after 40 30 40 years of surgery huh, he was in his 69 that was his age huh, 30 40 years was the first time he prayed that oh lord god whoever you are in the heart huh, that i have tried my best possible way i have used my best skills i have my intelligence but it looks is beyond my hands huh, i can do nothing but if you are there please i pray that please save this child and he started crying and he says the doctor says that 
when the friend said that when he was telling the story, the doctor he was crying actually, huh? So the doctor started crying during that operation, and he told the nurse, "Remove my, I cannot see. Remove my spectacles." And he cleared his eyes. And suddenly, his assistant that time told junior doctor, "Sir, doctor, ah, uh, the blood has started flowing. Ah, uh, the blood has started flowing in the heart. So he said, come on, put the heart lung machine on." And he did the surgery for the next four to five hours. and the child was saved that the the arteries were cleared and then he said to the parent that the the child is now going to stay for next 60 years he is going to survive huh? the operation was successful 30% rate and thereafter whenever he did surgery he put that photo of the lord god whatever on in his theater and he used to always pray that i am trying my best but finally it's in your hand yeah he got that faith so what i want to say is a small thing he did ha uh, which he never did earlier he put a prayer for the lord for the child right a small thing he added hmm? so here i want to say the concept of praying for others hmm? vishwar prabhu he does this he prays for many devotees i also happen to be in the list somehow i don't know this is mercy so i get i'm praying from vrindavan i am now in front of man mandir and i'm praying for you is broadcast to many people so inspired by him i also started to pray uh, for people daily i pray i pray when i go for yatras so i was when i was speaking with him as a preparation for this small thing happened to me so he told me about prayers he said that it is his realization that when others you pray for others the lord listens when you pray for yourself the lord may listen a bit slowly or he may not listen or whatever but when you pray for others the lord listens and when you pray for others automatically it happens that others also pray for you and the lord listens to them also <laughs> huh? so he told me this secret uh, which uh, which he's he has got this realized knowledge hmm, that when you pray for others lord listens faster huh? and others pray for you and lord listens to them also so can we add this to our list to constantly pray for others pray for our relatives pray for our friends pray for any person you feel feels is suffering you add this prayers constantly pray for others can we add this small thing which will make a big difference to that person and over a period it will make a big difference to you so these were the topics i wanted to cover huh? that this small things if you add to your life it will make a big difference to your devotion and i pray to the lord that we can understand more and more of the small things which matter huh? because we always have tend to look at the big things so much preaching lacks of people here yeah, and we neglect the small things going through one said in his lecture that devotional service is so simple i have not understood that statement even now but he said devotional service is so simple so simple that you may totally miss it <laughs> right the things which really matter to krishna the please krishna are actually very simple we are complex so we try to do big things complex things everything we are pleasing krishna and all that but simple things please krishna <laughs> so we pray that i pray that we all can understand those simple things in devotional service which are small things but which will attract krishna's grace and help us achieve big things and preach maharaj thank you very much hare krishna Thank <laughs> you.